that we're ready to get into the Word this morning. We're going to uh, continue our Thanks Living series. Hopefully everybody's been getting something out of that. You know, our first week we talked about just the general principle of, of Thanksgiving, that we need to be doing that. Um, and uh, then last week, you know, um, we talked about Thanksgiving to God even in the negative circumstances. And, uh, and I want to remind you of that. It's, uh, um, it's important to give thanks in all things, not, not for all things. Amen? We don't thank God um, for everything. We thank God in every circumstance. Um, you know, uh, quite a few years ago, but um, a number of years ago, people, you know, they, sometimes they'll take a truth and they'll take it over into a ditch. They'll, they'll take it, you know, way too far um, from its original intention. You always want to have a balance to the Word of God. You always want to take a truth of God's Word and keep it in the context of Scripture. And that way you don't pull it out and then go nuts with it. And, um, and so people were, um, for a period of time, thanking God for everything. Well, God's the source of everything. We thank God for everything. And uh, Jim Caseman, you know, um, decades ago, talked about this, that, that they were very young Christians, Jim and Kathleen, and, um, and you know, and... Losing a child, you know, uh, even thank you for, for taking my child. <laughs> you know, thank you. Well, God receives a child who dies. You know, um, uh, you know, when a baby dies, you know, we had a miscarriage. And so we know that we have a fourth child in heaven. Now, in our case, we don't know whether that's a little boy or a little girl. But we're going to meet that child one day. And we thank God that he receives that young life into his presence and uh, and that they're in glory and um, so that's what we can thank God in that circumstance but you don't thank God for taking your child the scripture says in John 10 10 and it's not in our sermon notes but John 10 10 tells us the thief comes not but for to kill steal to kill and destroy so who's the one who's taking life Satan Jesus says, but I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. The Scripture tells us that He's the one that gives us life. That He breathes life into us. So He's the life giver and Satan's the life taker. And I know that's the truth um, from studying the Scriptures, but I, I have seen the power of that truth, of having the balance and understanding the difference. Um, the very first funeral that I ever did as a very um, young minister, uh, um, not many years into the ministry, my first uh, funeral was for a little toddler who drowned. The, the little baby, um, I call him a baby, he was uh, one, a little over one year old, uh, about two years old I think, um, he uh, went out on the back deck, um, and of all things, I can't imagine as a grandparent, but of all things, um, it was the grandparent he was with. Uh, the sliding door um, to the back of the house was open. There was a tarp on the pool because the weather had changed and it had been raining, and, and so the tarp collected water in it, and this little toddler fell off into it and then you know, couldn't get out and, and drown. And the grandparent found him, and, and uh, they were they had some life signs, and so they rushed him to Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital in St. Louis, and he um, he struggled for a few days. Now, to give you a little bit broader context, I'm I'm over there ministering to the mom, praying with her, and and uh, you know communicating, trying to help her to understand everything that was going on because she was just devastated and just, you know, it's hard to think and focus and concentrate and, and didn't understand a lot of some of the big words that the doctors were saying and stuff. And, and, um, and so we believe God, he was on life support respirator, respirator and all that. And, um, but I'm praying, Lord, help me, because this mother, 
was very angry at God, quit going to church because her brother, almost a year to the day of her son dying, drowned. And she was mad at God. And I'm like, Lord, you know, um, because they, they were saying there's no vital, there's no brain activity. We just don't know. So we went through a couple days and then they said, he's, there's just zero brain activity. There's no coming back from this. And um, she didn't understand. I had to tell her they're saying that we're seeing his chest going up and down, but that's only because of the machine. He's already gone, and they want to pull the machines off. And I prayed with her um, as uh, she held her little little boy. And um, it's like, God... What do I do? What do I say? And all I did was love her. All I did was cry with her. And I know I referred to this not too long ago, I think probably two messages ago. And, um, and in just loving her, and then the funeral message, and this is what I was leading into that with, it's like, what do I preach? What do I say to this family? And he clearly said, you let them know that I received him. I did not take him. Because we have so many Christians who mean well that say things like, well, the Lord needed him, or the Lord wanted him. Uh, The Lord needed another flower in his garden. I can't tell you how many times I used to hear that. Um, I I don't hear it a lot because I teach this and preach this, so I don't hear it a lot around uh, the people that I'm around a whole lot. Um, But I used to hear that a lot. Uh, The Lord needed another flower in his garden and all these different things that never, never comforts. So anybody that's listening today, just know this. That never comforts a parent. There is nothing comforting about that. It's painful. It's excruciatingly painful. When we discovered that we lost a child, it hurt. And we, we never held that child. I, you know, uh, um, Rod and Annette's uh, uh, son and daughter-in-law had a little baby. Um, and uh, and he just lived a, a a little bit after the you know the birth and and went to heaven and there and that's painful. And a year later, or well, a little I guess a little over a year, um, had another child and and they they put a picture of her on there and uh, and said, well, I guess um, he just was involved in helping us get the just the perfect little little girl, you know, um, but he was in heaven. And yeah, it's just, you know, there, we thank God in the circumstance. We don't thank God for that stuff. That's why he said, tell him I received him. And so I, I did that. And you know what happened? The mom came back to the Lord, came back to her relationship with God because she just felt God's love. Because I said, Lord, just love her through me and hugged her and cried with her. God cries. You know, the shortest verse in the Bible Jesus wept, and he wept over a death. He wept over Lazarus being gone. And uh, because death, as as the Lord tells us, is an enemy. Jesus didn't even like to use the term death or dead. He'd say they're asleep. And so Jesus cries. He, He loves us. He'll comfort us and that's what I did and that brought her back and so it's very important for you to know that you are to thank God in all circumstances Lord I thank you that you are the God of comfort and that you will help me get through this most excruciating painful experience death hurts death has a Thing, unless we know somebody is a believer. But it brings a hurt and a pain. See, Jesus gave us a great hope and took away that, that, that sting of death in salvation, and yet it still has the tremendous pain. So I have comfort in knowing I'll see my son or daughter again. Others that are in here have had a similar experience, and uh, you'll see that child. 
and see loved ones that have passed. And so we can thank God in our circumstances, but we don't thank God for a loved one dying. We don't thank God for a car accident. We don't thank God for, you know, uh, losing our job or whatever it may be. We thank God in the circumstance, say, you can give me another job. You can give me another car. Remember in the first message we talked about Hallelujah Mary. And she just thanked God no matter what, even when her house burnt to the ground and everything she had in it. And I have a, 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 a sense of some of that kind of loss when um, we had our all of our wedding stuff. Um, a lot of it we just couldn't take when we got married uh, because we went to Kentucky and then then I got assigned to Korea, and we came back from Korea. We were going to Georgia. We thought, well, we're going to go pick up all of our stuff. So we had all these wedding gifts, um, you know, really nice things that, that were unopened. We had unique things um, from Korea, very special things that, that are unreplaceable, custom-made jackets that we had made and, and different things that we had done. And we, we got all of this stuff and put it in there, um, just all of our belongings, all my uniforms. I was in the Army, everything. And was in the back of, uh, of our car. And while we were in a hotel at night, somebody broke in the back of our car and stole everything that we had. And it was just like you felt that. Well, you don't thank God for something like that, but you thank God in all circumstances. Hallelujah, Mary had had all of her stuff burned. Everything was gone. And yet she thanked the Lord when the, when the neighbor says, now you have something to curse God over. Now you have something that there's no way you can thank God because she'd thank God no matter what. But when she walked up, he's thinking that's the way it's going to be. When she walks up and looks at this smoldering house and the, the, yeah, the smoke coming off of it and sees everything... She had been walking back from the grocery store and dropped the groceries and threw her hands up and started to thank God and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. And the neighbor was, that was just it. He was mad. What do you have to thank God for? She said, I could have been in there. See, we can thank God in any circumstance and know that He's still God. We know that we're in a broken, fallen world. We know there's... There's uh, uh, test trials and temptations that come because of a, of a tempter and, and, um, and, and the curse of the law is working in, in, in this world. And so we're navigating that and using our faith to walk in the victories that we can have in the Lord. And, and yet there's challenges along the way. And we thank God. And so I just want to um, today kind of summarize all of it, which is what I'm doing, the reason to be thankful, but also um, to be able to thank God in the negative times, not just in the good times. We thank God all the time, and that's why it's thanksgiving. It's easy to thank God when we have a blessing. Anybody got a new vehicle? I'll bet you were thanking God. I'll bet after you drove away in that, when Levi talked you into a van and you didn't want a van, you started driving that and you got to thinking, well, you know, this, this kind of fits. It feels good. And the more that you've driven it, the more, and, and you just thank God. I, to this day, my truck has gotten so beat up and wore out and, you know, and it's off and <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, I don't give it a bath like I, I uh, would, uh, you know, Normally, because it's just it's it's just a work truck. I've been working for for years out here, and uh, and yet I continue to just get overwhelmed with that. I have that, and I thank God for that. It's like God that I have this, and I can load all this stuff in the back of it and haul all this material. Do you know how much it would cost to to pay for delivery of every load of material that we've had in here? Just the sheetrock alone. I don't can't tell you how many truckfuls of sheetrock. I might have 20 or 30 sheets on there and, and bring it over and haul it in here and load, stack it up in the beginning, some of you may remember, and some of it's a 12-foot sheetrock, 12 by 4 foot 6, and get it stacked up, tons and tons of sheetrock, because this whole building, we've just put sheetrock everywhere. 
um, five eight sheetrock on all the ceilings, struck, put new built new ceilings and all of that. And just the sheetrock alone, let alone all the lumber and everything else, um, all these doors that are all new and solid. I've been able to do that in the truck. If I paid a delivery fee for every load of stuff delivered here, it would have cost a lot of money. But I had a pickup truck that the Lord blessed me with. And I just thank God for it. And even though our kids have grown and I'm thinking, you know, we need one of those with a third row. That's Lisa's desire. Having a big one. She wants a transport. Talk about a van. She wants one of those transport vans, you know, and fit all of the family in. But And I'm thinking on, on a truck, I'd like to get a third row seat kind of vehicle and, and all of that. Um, uh, because the six of us sitting in my truck has been a blessing. Because we can't fit six in her car. And I've thanked God so many times for that. But they've got a little bit bigger. And so they used to fight. They argued over who gets to sit in the middle between mom and papa or mom and dad. And, um, and now they fight over who has to sit in the front middle <laughs> and who has to sit in the back. You know, the big debate between Ethan and, and Emily is, um, I'm taller than you now, Ethan and, and Haley. I'm taller than you now, so I don't have to sit in the middle anymore. He used to because he was the youngest. But so, so it's like I'm ready for more leg room and growth. And I, and, but I still give thanks for the one that I have because I can fit them in there. We'll have the grandkids in there and we'll all fill, fill it up. Or we have, uh, um, you know, sometimes H Haley and Ethan will come and then we'll have Abigail and Hunter that will jump in there and, and they'll do the two middle spots and we'll have all six. There's much to be thankful for. And I, I say some of these things to tell my own stories to just remind you of thanking God because the big idea for today, everybody remember last week, the big idea for today is that we count our blessings. We name them one by one. And we talked about the illustration of the man who was going to give up, but he started thanking God before he was going to quit. Lord, I can't do it anymore. I'm going to quit. But then when he started thanking God for what he had done, I've got to thank you first, though. That turned everything around. And he was on fire for God. So is Thanksgiving all that important? Is it important enough to do every day to, be, uh, to have thanks living rather than just one day of the year to be thankful? Or on occasion when something good happens to thank God for it and then forget about it? How many times have we thanked God for something that we then begin to curse? <laughs> you know, I could get ungrateful and say, this truck's too small. I, well, that's silly. I thank God the same. It's like, Lord, you're the same God that gave me this truck that has been such a huge blessing and fit our family and still can fit our family. But I thank you, Lord, that if you gave me that one, you can give me a transport for my wife. And then we can drive that with all of the kids. You know? Um, that's how it works. So it's thanks living. But is it all that important to do all the time? Yeah. Jesus was sent to this world to be our role model, to be our example. We're to be followers of Christ. And what does that mean? That we just are believe it doesn't say just be believers in him. And we're called believers. But it says to be followers of Christ. We're to follow after him. Whatever he would do, wherever he would go, that's where we go. And then it says that we are we are his body. We're to do what he does. And then we got called Christians. And you know what Christian means? It means Christ ones. Little Christs. See, we are the image. God, Jesus was the image of the Father. And it tells us that we're being fashioned and formed into the image of Jesus. So we got, and it was a negative, but we embraced it. Remember, have you, does anybody remember some of the things in recent history where it was a pejorative? People got called something negative as a criticism, but then they embraced it. Anybody ever heard of the term deplorable? <laughs> They're a basket full of deplorables. I'm not criticizing one candidate or party over another. I'm just saying, remember that? 
when a candidate for president said they're a basket full of deplorables. Well, you know what? Now people say, I'm a deplorable. People go by the, the deplorables. And, there, and you can think of other examples where people have said something like that. Well, back in, in the day, when you read in the book of Acts, it says they were first called Christians. In a, you little Christ. You, you Christ ones. They were mocking them. It was a derogatory. But they're like, this is descriptive. This is perfect. I am a Christ one. I am a little Jesus. I am being formed into the image of Jesus. And so they embraced it. And so we're called Christians. We have so much to be thankful for. He's our example. And he lived a life of thanksgiving. Matthew chapter 26, verse 27. And mind you that this is his darkest hour. This is before he's going to be suffering for our sins. So in his darkest hour, facing imminent torture and suffering, it says in Matthew 26, 27, then he, Jesus, took the cup and gave thanks. He gave thanks. Then he gave it to them saying, drink of it all of you. Is that thing flashing over there? What is going on with that TV? We've done so many things. I don't know what's going on. Um, I have a theory because I made a setting change for the boys this morning. A oh, little, little, little pastor thought, you know, out, out of the thing. Anyway, Jesus, you could say, doesn't really have anything to be thankful for. <laughs> you know, he could say, thank you for what you've done. We sang the song, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for all that you're going to do, but, but not thank you for what's happening in the next, uh, next hours. <laughs> no, he thanked God, and that was his pattern. He always gave thanks. He would even give thanks that, that Lord, you came up with a plan that we could bring our creation back to you. The Scripture says, for the joy of that was set before Him. He endured the cross. See, He was thankful to be able to go to the cross because He knew that, that it would purchase our salvation and it was the only way to purchase our salvation. And there was joy in that. that He endured that pain. He endured that suffering. He endured that shame because He knew the result would be that His people would be uh, brought back in. There's a way back into fellowship and relationship with the Father that we could live with the, the Lord in, in eternity. That salvation would come. And so, Jesus sets the example that He could thank God even in His darkest hour. And so we can thank God in our darkest hour. Not for what's happening, but we thank God in that situation. We also, is Thanksgiving important? We also say that it's important because He commands or He instructs us to offer Thanksgiving to God. Um, let's go to Psalm 50, verse 14 and 15. It says, Offer to God Thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High God. Offer to God Thanksgiving. We should be giving God an offering of Thanksgiving. And then, uh, along the same theme, just to bring it out, is it just for Jesus? Um, verse 15 says, call upon me in the day of trouble. And how can we thank God in that? Because I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. <laughs> we can thank God even in the day of trouble because we know that, that you know, it will pass. You can say this too will pass. That God is with me. God will help me. I love the palm footprints, footprints in the sand. Should have put that up here as a slide. Um, but you all know the poem. That, you know, at the end of a person's life, they look back and they say, you know, when I look back over, over this beach and the sand and, and I saw footprints in it, but when I look back, and that's wonderful, but when I look back, I see these places where there's only one set of footprints. And that was during the times that were the most difficult times in my life. Lord, why would you not be with me during those times of all times? And you know, and as the poem, the story goes, it's like, 
Oh, my child, it's not that I wasn't with you during those times. There's only one set of footprints there because that's when I carried you. And we've all been there. We can thank God in the time of trouble, knowing that He's going to carry us and He can deliver us from anything. I didn't have time to get into it last week, but I think about the the woman that Elisha, you know, said would have a child, and the child comes, and and the child uh, is is a young child. He's he's grown to a point where he's a, a little boy. He's uh, out working with his dad, so he's you know physically grown enough to be able to help you know farm or whatever they were doing. And then all it says, oh my head, my head, and he collapses. He apparently had a brain seizure or something to that effect. He brings the body of this boy into the mother, and and she was distraught, you know. Um, and she said, lay the child on the bed, and and uh, and then tells the staff to go get the prophet or prepare. I, you know, I'm mixing it all up. But she, but he says, he's she's asked, is it well with you? She says, it is well. How do you say it is well? Because she knew God can deliver from anything, even death. The prophet comes, is everything well? Is he, are you well? Your husband well? Your child well? And then he, he, she says it's well. But they, he sends a staff and lays it on the child. He gets there to pray over the child. And, and twice in that period, the mother says it is well. When she sees the prophet, she's like, I told you, don't mock me, don't tease me about having a baby. And he's like, you'll have a baby this time a year from now. And he says, oh, don't tease me about that. And she did. And then and it's like, oh, the Lord gave me this baby. And the prophet comes, and, and because she stayed in a place of faith, God was able to deliver in that circumstance, even from death. And I have seen that happen at times where we have been able to pray and someone just come back from 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 death you know i mean there numerous times i've seen it and just people live on and 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 so we just got to thank god in every circumstance that you're god and you're able and just believe god and and then when when everything doesn't go our way including that circumstance if we stay in the right attitude, the right focus, stay in faith and, and be thankful that, he, that we have a God to go to, a God that can comfort, a God that's helping us in that, we can even see miracles. So there's so much to be thankful for, um, even in the, in the hard circumstances. See, in Psalm 69, verse 30, it tells us that and I think I had mentioned the scripture that Thanksgiving magnifies God. I'm not sure if I had used this one or not, but that Thanksgiving magnifies God. Verse 30 of Psalm 69, I will praise the name of the Lord of God. I will praise the name of God with a song, and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. When we thank we're, when we're doing Thanksgiving, we magnify God. Now let me ask you a quick question. Can we make God bigger? Can we make him magnified? Can we can we grow God? Bigger than he is? No. What happens, it's not that God is magnified, it's he's magnified in our eyes through our thanksgiving. See, when we start counting our blessings, again, that's the big idea. When we start counting our blessings and looking at God in the circumstances and what he's doing, our faith can rise, miracles can happen, but even when, when we, we suffer loss, we have the comfort of God and know that we're not alone. We don't grieve like those who don't have hope. Thessalonians tells us that. And we can have a comfort in God. He's carried me through some painful things in my life. I know He has for you too. And we can thank God in those circumstances. And so, so He gets magnified and the bigger He gets in our eyes the more faith arises and the more joy we have. And remember, Thanksgiving brings happiness, brings joy. That was the big idea of the first message. Do you want to be happy? <laughs> Do you want to have happiness in life? Joy in life? A secret for that is to be thankful every day. 
God will get big and we'll see his glory. So as God gets bigger, our faith grows. Now, how do we do that? I wrap it up today with this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 9. As therefore you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. We should abound with thanksgiving. Our faith should produce great thanksgiving. Our faith will grow as a result of thanksgiving, and so the faith causes, our faith is abounding as a result of that thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to, to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. There are, the thief comes to steal or to rob, to kill and destroy. What is he doing to rob us? Uh, philosophy, vain deceit, uh, um, to question us, to question, to question ourselves, to question God. And that, that the result would, would be that we're cheated of our faith. Verse 9 says, For in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus loves you. The great revelation, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, is the great truth of the Bible, and he always loves me, he's always with me, he will never leave me, he'll never forsake me, and he will be um, being present, being with me in all circumstances, he will even carry me when he needs to. And so, I need to just thank God, I need to count my blessings and thank God, and so, so look around, if you find yourself Getting negative, uh, looking at what you don't have, fix that by just counting your blessings. If you're like, Lord, this, this vehicle is, is, is getting too small, or this vehicle doesn't just do this just right, or, or whatever, don't start cursing the thing. Just thank God I have a vehicle that runs. <laughs> there are some people who don't have a vehicle. I know that's the way Lisa and I started out. I talked about that last week, where I was having to walk to the fort. We had to walk to the grocery store. But I only got paid once a month. And so, I, I could have went and bought some. and that, But you know, you got when you shop, you just got to get what you're going to get so you can get your mind around it and not think, okay, I'll come back and get. So you just, you get it. So we'd go to the Kroger store that was a little over a mile away from our apartment we were living in, our first apartment, and we'd get our groceries. And so Lisa would stay there and guard the groceries. And I would take two or three bags, depending on how heavy the bags were, and power walk or, you know, jog if they were light enough and I could do it, the mile there, and then I would run back a mile, do another one and run back, and then maybe the third trip, uh, we could both carry the balance of the groceries, third or fourth trip, depending on what all we got, how many bags we had, and do that. And I didn't, we didn't have a car. And I don't have time to tell you the story of our first car, but man, I'm thankful for it. Maybe that'll be one of my Thanksgivings next week. <laughs> Probably not, but it could be. So thank God. Count your blessings. I thank God for what I did have. I thank God for getting those rides. You know, I pretty much got a ride. I talked about the art of walking. <laughs> you know, um, but I literally got rides from people every day picking me up on the way into the fort. And then often somebody give me a ride home, you know, say, hey, you want a ride home? Walking into the fort, you know, they didn't volunteer to get up and drive out to the apartment and pick me up and take me in there. So I just get picked up by a soldier heading into the fort. God's so faithful. I'm just thankful. And I thank God for that first car, and it has some challenges, and I thank God for the next car, and, and, and it's just been a life of so many things. So thank God. Count your blessings. When you're doing that, your faith will grow, and he's able to do even more. See, we magnify God, He gets big, and he's, he's the center of our focus, and He can do much. If we magnify what we don't have, we're magnifying the God of this world, the devil, and, and what He has taken or not given us, and, and that gets big. So count your blessings, name them one by one. Amen? Amen. I'm going to pray, and then maybe we'll sing that song. I think they loaded it. Maybe. Can we do it a cappella? Are you all able to do it?
Janie can help us. So uh, Kelsey can help us. You want to come up here and help me sing? No. <laughs> so um, let's, all, let's all sing that song after we pray. Father, thank you for today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for all of our blessings. Today's not the day we're going to count them. Well, maybe today we'll count them, but not at this moment. That'll be next service. But Lord, we thank you. We're so thankful, and we just thank you for this message. We thank you for Jesus. He came. He was born into this world to live and die for us. So we're thankful for Christmas that we're getting ready to decorate for. Oh, we thank you for all of your blessings and worship you today. We love you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen.